All right, so we already went through uh, the first sub-industry, uh, which was fertilizers. Uh, next, I'd like to find uh, another company to, to invest in, uh, this time from the chemical and plastic uh, industry. So let's go ahead and click on that. I'll also filter out and try and find uh, companies uh, to invest in. So this time I'm gonna pick uh, yeah, chemicals, uh, I suppose. That's gonna be chemicals. I don't know if that's the same, like chemical plastic and chemicals specialized. Let's see if that's the same thing. So I see chemical plastic and chemical specialty down there. So maybe we should just pick chemicals. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, a good place to start would be to actually understand the difference. So chemical. Okay, I see plastic and resin manufacturing in Illinois. Not what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see chemical plastic. I don't see chemical plastic here, uh, and so maybe a better idea is to just pick specialty. Yeah, just pick all chemicals, uh, regardless of whether they're specialty or not. Uh, one thing I'm also inclined to do uh, is filter by debt to equity. And I'll let you know what I mean uh, in a sec, but okay, let, let's go ahead and pick chemical plastic as well as chemical specialty. One month return, 10%. Three months, 17, one year, 94%. Yeah, that's from the March lows. <laughs> You'll be shocked to know that this is actually lagging the S&P 500. Wow. All right, so what is this industry? Manufacturers of polymer materials like Poly One Corporation. And specialty? Specialty chemicals like Ashland, Ink, okay, not very useful. It's just repeating the title. Uh, in here. Oh. Let's see if petrochemical. All right, you know what, let's pick chemical product manufacturing. Let's see what that's about. Pause here. Continue. All right, cool. So this is chemical product manufacturing. And you can see world price of crude impacts, uh, industrial production index, per capita disposable income, uh, and a trade weighted index. Per capita disposable income kind of leads me to believe that this is uh, discretionary. And first tier suppliers, oxygen, hydrogen gas, plastic and resin. Okay, so plastic and resin would be the basic materials. Uh, industrial machinery, petroleum, inorganic chemicals, organic chemicals, and petrochemicals. Okay. Buyers is the chemical wholesaling industry. And second tier buyers, manufacturing. Okay, all right, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. Compounding resins, reformulating plastic resins from recycled plastic. Okay, uh, this, this difference in naming convention is just driving me nuts, you know? It's driving me nuts. 
uh, chem specialty, chemical plastic, and then the stock screener calls it something else. What is it called here? Chemicals. Chemicals. Yeah, it's just driving me nuts. Uh, all right, why is this not loading? What's going on? Let's do a refresh. 50 mil to 5 billion. That's, that's a market cap filter I'm trying to focus on. So unselect, unselect, unselect. All right, so 50 million to 5 billion. Industry is chemicals. And I'm inclined, I'm inclined to filter it by debt to equity as well. I don't know what the typical debt to equity is. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and add a column here to include debt equity. Take your time. Okay, debt to equity. All right, we'll start with the lowest by debt to equity and then work our way up. I hate, oh, okay. All right, you've got negative values in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of stocks. Is there any other way we can filter them? I don't want to check the fundamentals for every single one of these. Okay. We can check uh, interest coverage. Let's see. All right, uh, I like the ones that don't have any interest. Is there a description field in here as well? Uh, Wait, that's nice. Number of unique insider buys. No insiders buying, okay. That wasn't very helpful. All right, you know what, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, we're probably gonna ignore the ones with negative debt to equity. Those are the ones you wanna avoid uh, because, well, equity is negative. Yeah. I'm not going to get involved with any companies that have negative equity. Anyway, um, so might as well start with uh, future fuel. Are there any here that we, we could take a look at? Okay, so apparently everything is just green. Okay, all right, all right, that's chemical specialty, and then you have a bunch here as well. Cough tea, curry, TSE, Trinzeo. Yeah, I've actually got Trinzeo in my portfolio already. Uh, I don't know if Trinzeo would show up here. Ah, huh, that's weird. It's not here. And, and but yeah, let's do this. Uh, so I can see, um, let's see, where is a good place to start? Um, okay, uh, let's take a look at, say, NTIC. I have no idea what they do, but NTIC. Let's see. So they develop and market rust and corrosion inhibiting products and services, South America, Middle East, and internationally. Such as plastic and paper packaging, liquids, coatings, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Um, so NTIC, very little debt, just under a million. I, I think that's an operating lease too. Uh, Nine million shares, 46 in revenue. Okay, so decline, I guess, probably due to COVID. 
Um, what else we got? 6.8 quick ratio, cash ratio is one. So fair to say that you don't have to worry about them going out of business due to debt. All right, what else we got? Um, assets, 752 intangible book. All right, tangible book's growing. Uh, book value is increasing as well. Okay, all right, looks good. Uh, do you have any dividends? Yes, you do. And they started doing dividends since 2018. Pretty good, okay. So let's take a look at the operations. What do we have? So 34% gross margin in line with the past 6% EBITDA, which I mean, it's just been dropping like crazy since 2019. What's the deal there, right? It was up to 13, 17%. It was in the 20s back in the early 2000s, 2010 onwards. Yeah, I'd want to know why. Like, why on earth is this declined to 6%? And is it just temporary or is it going to bounce back? Net income is negative. Yeah. Don't like negative net income. Operating cash flow is positive, so there's that. Free cash flow is positive too. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the... No, free cash flow is actually greater than operating cash flow. So they have negative capex. How could that be? Weird. Yeah, I'd wanna look into that. Um, net cash flow 0.3, I guess they repaid, did they repay debt? Yeah, it looks like they repaid a little bit of debt. And I don't know if they bought any shares. But okay, 0.8, 0.3, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, asset turnover, looks like it's okay uh, compared to what it's been historically. Return on equities, not great, not great. 3% minus, minus 9, 13, okay. All right, I mean for this, just, just basing this off, I don't know why <clears throat> now income is negative and whether it's gonna come back or bounce back or not, <clears throat> but operating cash flow is positive. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, all right, tangible book is seven, your cash is 0.7, I'm probably thinking somewhere around three bucks, three bucks a share. And then, all right, so you have a dividend, which is about 10 cents, 20, 20 cents, 10 cents. Um, all right, so that's a buck. So four bucks, I wouldn't pay more than four. Whoa, 16, how? Is, maybe there's some factor I'm not accounting for. So 16, 15 times, so the EV is 15, okay. Yeah, three times revenue. Whoa, what? Why? 2.5 times book, two times tangible book. Yeah, I'm having a hard time swallowing that. Why would it be two times tangible book? Is it asset light? Is that why? If you were a beta, whoa, 52 times a beta. Whoo, yeah, that's, that's spicy. You know, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, looks expensive to me. Now, I, I don't know what to compare it to. Let's see, peer NTIC. But it looks expensive to me. So no point even saying no that uh, we're starting with all the ones that don't have that. Um, so negative net income margin. You need to look into that. Um, what else do we have? Uh, where did that go? Yeah. NTIC, so you have... Mm -hmm. Now income trailing 12 months. Yeah, I don't know what to compare it to. Maybe FF? FF, maybe Ryan? Possibly. Possibly. Let's take a look at FF. 
Man, 52 times they beat down. That is not normal. This is five times. Specialty can. Agricultural, chemical, coating, industry, and consumer, cleaning, oil and gas, biofuels. Okay, all right. No debt. Revenue decline. Uh, book per share decline, so equities down. Are they paying dividends? They are paying dividends. Whoa, that is one hell of a dividend. Three bucks, 24. All right, talk to me about the margins. 49% gross margin EBITDA is higher. So again, this whole thing about depreciation, amortization, uh, being greater than your operating expenses, which drives up your EBITDA margin above and beyond your gross margin, which is nuts. Uh, operating margin, 44. Net income is 65, what? How is net income so much higher than operating income? Whoa, okay, that must be a one-time thing. No, it's consistently higher. How? Interest, taxes. So the operating margin is essentially EBIT, right? Uh, and then interest and taxes, if they're negative, if the sum of interest and taxes is negative, which maybe they're eating into their tax assets. Yeah, that could be it. Is that how tax yield works? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I don't wanna make stuff up here. I need to look into that. Tax shield. Net income. This is FF, huh? FF, net, net income margin greater than operating margin. How does tax shield work? Yeah, I'm gonna look into that to understand how that's even possible, because this, this seems super strange to me. Usually they just trickle down. You have a funnel and numbers keep getting smaller. When you see a number larger than the number above it, it makes me take pause. Anyway, net income margin of 65% is definitely not sustainable, um, even on declining margin, especially on declining revenue. But it's obviously, I, I think it's a tax thing. Uh, anyway, uh, so net income, uh, so typically the net income margins have been around 15, 20%. Looks like 15, 20% is your standard. So EPS, 1.2. Two, two bucks, two fifty nine. Uh, I think probably your adjusted DPS. Yeah, I'd want to see adjusted DPS. Yeah, I don't have adjusted DPS on here. Uh, that'd be a good idea. Show adjusted EPS. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. Why am I? Why am I still looking at this? All right, cool. So how, how would I price this? Uh, return on equity is phenomenal. This is really good. Like the financials are insanely good. I would just be concerned about the outlook of the company because revenue seems to be in steady decline. They only had a fluke here in 17 and 18. Uh, otherwise, it's just been steady decline since 2013. So not sure about the prospects of the company. How would I price that? But, you know, earnings, maybe 15 times earnings, plus the dividend, like that last dividend was nuts. If I'm gonna look at the other dividends, say 24 cents, that's two bucks. Um, and then an EPS multiple, say 15, 20, that'd be 15 maybe, EPS. The other way to look at it is just take a, portion of tangible book, right? Uh, a fraction of ta tangible book. So tangible book set 10 bucks. Okay. Tangible book. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be much less than 10 bucks. Yeah, probably gonna be a multiple of tangible book. But yeah, just based on EBITDA, two bucks. Say a dollar, I mean, if you're gonna average, it's probably gonna work out to a dollar 50. Multiply that by and one and a half tangible book. 15. Yeah, that's it. If you have a revenue, three times revenue. Uh, 
three times. So historically, that's pretty high. The price to book is 1.8. Price to tangible book, 1.5. Yeah, that's expected. 5.3 times the beta? Wow. EV is actually lower than your market cap. <laughs> Than price per share. Uh, four times P. Wow. This is really cheap. This strikes me as like, maybe maybe people have just given up on FF. Uh, they, what do they call that? Cigar butt. Cigar butt investing. To quote Warren Buffett. Future looks strong. This guy hasn't given up. Special dividend of three bucks per share last year. So that was a special dividend. That would explain this. So it's normally 24, and then they paid a special dividend. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'd be nice. Insiders own about 40%, so interest aligned with shareholders. Okay, let's just take a look at the chart. This is nice, I like uh, I like FF. Now, I don't like that the thing come with any trigger, so yeah, I don't have any triggers, so I kind of feel hesitant. I probably want to do a bit more digging to understand what's going on. But wow, like this looks pretty good. Like since December, 12 bucks, and now it's up to 16. This is really good. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet the house on it, but it looks solid. Yeah, RSI is kind of high. RSI on the two hour, even the four hour, it's kind of high. I like to buy when people are selling, uh, not when everybody else is buying. So okay, uh, let's. So th this would probably be a good buy at around fifteen. Yeah, I'd say fifteen. Yeah, fifteen would probably be a good price to buy this at. So I'm just gonna add a stock alert. This looks nice. I, I like this company. It's so simple. I, I don't know about the outlook, the outlook of the company, but man, fundamentally, it looks super sound to me. You know, just open up a position. See how that fares. Future Fuel Corp. Reminds me of those uh, MLM, MLM companies. Multi-level marketing. They have really good financials. Uh, and then I'm looking at them like, wow, this is really good. How, how do they have such high, such high net income margins? And then I check and yeah, lo and behold, it's a, an MLM firm. All right, so investors, you know, one thing I also like to do uh, is future fuel. So I hit LinkedIn, and I search, I search for the company on LinkedIn, and I try to understand what the employee trend uh, is like. So future fuel. Yeah, that's the one. Insights. Okay, it doesn't really say much. So in the past year, they've they've dropped one percent. So it's not a growing company, but it seems to be doing all right. Two hundred employees, relatively stable. Cool. And uh, also, insider data. So I try to find insider buying. Yeah, nothing. This guy's been selling. Paul Flynn. He's been selling since the start. Yeah, the price though. This guy purchased 11 bucks, 10 bucks. 
He knows what's up. All right, cool. Uh, not much to say, huh? March 16th. Oh, that's next week. Next week, they're going to release their financial statements for well, last quarter of last year. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so add that to the buy list. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd want 1%. Um, actually, I don't add it just yet. Uh, I wait until... <clears throat> uh, I wait until the price triggers, then I buy. I'm in no rush. Can take my time with this. Cool, so that's up uh, nice. Uh, what else we got? Um, so I was in the peer group uh, for NTIC. So I was actually looking at NTIC, right? Uh, and then that's how I came up, came upon uh, FF right here. You can see their price to book. Uh, it's actually cheaper than NTIC in price to book. Uh, price to tangible book, yeah, it's a bit more expensive. But EV beta, no comparison. Five versus 54. Uh, I, I don't see myself buying NTIC at 54. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'd want to understand declining revenue. Uh, I don't think I actually found that, huh? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I just get so trigger happy I forget. Uh, so let's just make sure rapidly improving the actual yield of 4%. Okay. Improving, huh? Small biodiesel chemical producer. Yeah, this was a while ago. Uh, this is back in May. Let me see the chart again. So back in May. Yeah, that was at 10 bucks at the time. Went up and then dunked and went up and dunked. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll wait. We'll wait and see. I no rush. What else we got? So that was that was F5. And uh, we already saw NTIC. Uh, so we can get rid of NTIC. And then you have uh, Neo. All right. No. No PMF. No PMF. What is that? No product market fit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Neo performance material. Rare earth, rare metal based functional materials in Canada and internationally. Ah. Uh, can't pull in the data. <sighs> Probably a Canadian company. Yeah, that's why you can't see it. I can't be bothered to look it up. Chase Corp. Uh, chemicals, CCF. Let's look it up. Find a peer company. Chase Corp. 
Chase Corey. Oh, Future Fuel. Okay. Interesting. Let's compare it to Future Fuel. Protective materials for various applications. Adhesives, sealants, additives, industrial tapes, corrosion protection. Oh, it is very similar to FF. Nice. Yeah, okay. So I had that once upon a time. Now it's cut back. Revenue, pretty stable, even through COVID. No recent share issuances. That's nice. That's always nice. Don't want to get diluted. That's equity, really low. Very nice. Equity multiplier. Yeah, looks solid. Yeah, the unlikely to go bankrupt. No bankruptcy risk. Well, very low. Uh, right, what do we got? Uh, assets, 3823. Oh, come on. Yeah, there's intangibles. Why, why do they have intangibles? Did they acquire a company? They must have, right? What are the intangibles? Here it is. Eh, and it's gone up since, yeah, in the past 12 months, it's gone up. I hate seeing intangibles. I'm just gonna ignore assets. I'm just gonna consider a tangible book. So you're gonna go somewhere between cash and tangible book. That's the value. We can't be more than tangible book. I will not pay more than tangible book. Unless, and let's take a look at performance. And dividends, look at dividends, that's nice. 0.8, it's been consistent. This is great. All right, so gross margins around about 40%. Beta margin, 25, okay, very nice. Beta per share is seven. Operating margins, 18%. Net income, all right, net income over 10% consistently. This is good, this is good. Net income, 10%, I love this. Earnings per share, pretty strong, pretty strong. So we're thinking like, how would I, hmm. Wow, the return on invested capital is ridiculous. Return on equity is pretty strong too. This is phenomenal. Okay, I don't like the asset turnover increasing. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that, that's, that's a red flag for me. Not a big red flag, but I'd wanna, I'd wanna understand why. Yeah, I wanna understand why. But man, solid net income, I love this. I love it, and consistent, like, have they never lost money? Wow, this is amazing. I love this, this business is amazing. Revenue trending up. I mean, just last year it dipped, but COVID, right? Enough said, COVID. Solid, solid, solid company. All right, so how would I price this? Not looking at price, not looking at price. How would I price this? I'd say, all right. Uh, and you can comp it to FF too, right? But uh, definitely gonna be worth more than cash. Um, oops. So it's gonna be between tangible book, uh, so probably probably higher than tangible book. I mean, uh, net income. So EPS is four, and maybe you're gonna pay 10 times, 15, if you're generous, that's 60. Uh, and then you're gonna add 38 bucks, 68. And if you're going to consider it in terms of tangible book, yeah, I'd say 68. I think 68. Whoa, 120. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got to pay a premium. This is a solid company. And yeah, I should have imagined that. I mean, you're, you're not just going to take 10 times the beta. That'd be uh, 10 times earnings. 10, 15 times earnings, no way. I, I think probably at least 20. I was being, I was being greedy. I was being greedy. But man, how many times earnings is this? 28. 28 times earnings. That's rich. That's very rich. I mean, compared to FF. I can understand if the outlook is positive for the business. Yeah, I, I can see, you know, 28 maybe working. Uh, Ibita, 16, Man, I, I just don't see it. 0.8, like the dividend yield is negligible. Five times the tangible book. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore a book. I'm, I'm just gonna ignore it. Uh, actually, no, uh, 
I mean, you're gonna ignore assets. Uh, but your book, 32, okay, that's pretty good. 32 is pretty solid. Four times revenue, so it's high historically. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see. I don't see 120. There's no way I'm gonna buy at 120. They're probably thinking, oh wow, this company is gonna shoot to the moon. I'm, I, I just don't see it, I can't. Maybe there's some sort of trend that is causing it to secular growth with attractive business models, strong balance sheet. Okay, let me see, let me see. Let's see what's going on. Forty-eight percent increase in EPS. Ah, cash-based accretive acquisition of AB Chimi, worth twenty-two million. That's where the intangibles came from. Inorganic growth through attractive acquisitions and integration. How many did they say? 24 subsidiaries. 25, wow. So they just buy companies. Okay. X cash PE. Yeah, that's my first time seeing of this metric. X cash PE. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's probably because it has a lot of cash. Yeah, 90 mil. I mean, that'd be your EV, right? X cash PE. EV. EV of revenue. You could just do EV of earnings. Actually, make it worse. <laughs> Even your earnings. No. Um, all right. What am I saying? PO at twenty six over the last thirty years. Right now, it's twenty eight. Uh, it was thirteen here. It would have been phenomenal. All right. Uh, I want to see the chart. I think I'm. I think I'm actually going to buy this. I just need to find the right time, uh, the right price. I'm. I'm not going to be paying. I'm not paying 120. Uh, four times the revenue. I mean, it's solid. It kind of the higher you go, the more you're the more you're valuing future growth prospects. And um, with these smaller cap companies, I try and avoid that. Like the niche is just going to be turnaround stories or stories where like the company the company is worth more than it's trading for. You know, something where even if the company goes bankrupt, you still have something to salvage. Um, but here it'd just be a, a huge write-off. What am I looking at? Ah, the chart. Okay, four hours. Sparsely. Sparsely traded. I don't like that much. Alright, so, um, so yeah, it's just not a good time to buy. Like if I were, if I were gonna buy uh, at the daily, it's probably gonna be somewhere here. Like at the 10, uh, 105 range. Yeah, I think 105 would be okay. I don't know. Dividend yield is crap. Whoa, it dropped to 50. 120. Yeah, maybe, maybe 105, possibly. Possibly 105. What about the four hour mark? What's RSI looking, looking like on the four hour? Yeah, again, like if you can get to somewhere here, 105. I think 105 is a good price. Yeah. Uh, 
this is how I, if you're wondering what I'm doing with it, uh, I have an email alert set up. So whenever this column changes, like the target is met, uh, I get an email. Uh, and so this is what this does. Uh, it allows me to track uh, the prices without checking in, uh, without checking in continuously. So that way I just get an email when something changes, which is pretty cool. All right, so I have CCF taken care of. Uh, I don't understand why asset turnover is running up. Not a big deal. I honestly don't want to spend too much time on this. Internet of things. Hmm. So asset turnover going up means inventory is up too, right? That's what I imagine. Inventory, yeah. It's just been going up uh, for a while. Right now they're sitting on 40 million inventory. But still, like relative to total assets, it's roughly 10%, so not to worry, not to worry. Okay, cool, nice, that was a good find. I like that, CCF. You know, if, if there was insider buying, I'd probably buy it at a higher price, but yeah, I don't see it. All right. Um, so, where did I even get CCF? What were the warnings? Uh, sometimes it shows two severe warnings, really? What is that? Oh crap, I must have lost. Asset growth faster than revenue growth. Operating margin declined? Mm, let's see. Yeah, but, oh wait, operating margin. Yeah, but it's been growing. It's growing back. Like trailing 12 months is up 2% versus 2020. Not a cause for concern. Like it doesn't look like it was, it was a huge issue. Sure, it dropped three quarters in a row, three years in a row, but it looks like it's coming back. Wouldn't worry too much about it. Cool, so take me back. Please don't lose the screener. Oh, it's still there. Oh, great. All right, so CCF, very nice. What else we got? This looks solid. Victrix. This is not a good look, you know? Only you're looking at me and you're like, wow, this guy is just buying every ticker he's looking at. No, I'm surprised. Like, I, I don't normally do this. Uh, besides, I didn't buy anything. I'm waiting for the price to drop. If it doesn't drop, I don't buy it. So... Yeah, VTX, three severe warnings. Okay, I'm ready. VTX PF, give it to me. By the way, I'm pulling all these details from Yahoo Finance. I can show you the code if you're interested later. Oh man, I hate these, these tickers that have five characters. They usually don't work. They don't work with my with my API tracker or whatever. Yeah, I just can't be bothered. You know, I can't be bothered. I mean, I hate looking up all the details. I've just gotten too used to it. You know, I hate looking up all these details through some third party. Just don't. Can't be bothered. Yeah, Eco synthetics. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's another one of those five. ECSNF. Probably not gonna work. I think it's Canadian. Yeah, probably Canadian. Or maybe it's OTC, right? Yeah, headquartered in Canada. All right. Uh, Nano One Materials Corp. SK. Probably same thing, right? Uh, all right. This is a four-letter one. IOSP. Let's take a look. What do we got? What do we got? Develops, manufactures, blends, markets and supplies specialty chemicals. Okay. What do they do? Fuel specialties, performance chemicals, oil fields, services segments. Personal care, metal extraction, agrochemical, and oil field. Okay, all right. Cool. So declining revenue, 
That's that's a pretty strong one though for COVID, huh? Forty one in debt, so they've been repaying debt pretty consistently. That's nice. That's nice. Debt to equity is pretty low too. I like that. Quick ratio is one point three. Cash ratio somewhat low, but interest coverage, cash over interest, yeah, nothing to worry about there. So unlikely to go bankrupt. Uh, assets. Let's see what we got. Tangible book thirty eight. Oh, come on. Come on with the intangibles. I hate seeing intangibles. It's just, it's a put off, you know? Book value is 38.45, trending up nicely. Cash per share is going up. Okay. Liquidation to common is 20. 20? It's pretty good. A dollar dividend. Okay. I like that. I can live with that. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trending up too. Yeah, that's what they do sometimes with dividends. It's like they try to keep a trend um, so that there's some people that screen by increasing dividends. Or maybe they're trying to maintain a margin as the stock price rises. I don't know. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, you know, I'm thinking tangible book 38. Yeah, pretty good. Gross margin. Okay. Okay, all right. So you... Eh, it looks like it's on average about 30%. Just had a fluke in 2016. All right, yeah. You beat a margin, 7, 13, 13, 14, 16. Okay, so this is probably a COVID thing, right? 7%. So normally it's 13, 15. Let's say 15% normally. But COVID, I can understand. Okay, I get it. Operating expenses. Uh, so operating margin just dipped, but typically it's around 10%. And then the income margin... Uh, around about, again, like between 5 and 10%. Okay. All right. Uh, call it 6%. So typically 6%. So EPS, you can't really run with this EPS, assuming pre-COVID EPS. Yeah, you probably have to calculate pre-COVID EPS. But yeah, about $4, $4 350 So maybe, hmm, I don't know. Maybe the... Return on equity, pretty good. I mean, barring COVID, uh, 13, 10%, 18, 29. Return on invested capital, really good. Really good. Asset a turnover, eh, roughly average. I don't see a huge deal. I don't see a huge deal. All right, so how would you value this? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I don't see any industry values. And if I were to compare it to FF, FF has, uh, how do you compare this? I don't know, there are multiple ways. Like, it's gonna be, is it gonna be a fraction of tangible book? I don't know, it seems to me like a multiple. Um, I, I, I'd look at a beat up per share. So roughly eight bucks. And probably multiple of the beat up 10x, 80. Or earnings, 20 times also works out to roughly 80. Yeah, I think 80. Oh, the dividends. Yeah, 10 bucks, maybe 90. Oh, it's 90, it was 90, it's 100 now. Okay, that was a good guess, I like it. All right, so it was roughly 20, 20 beta, huh? Yeah, 20 beta. 20 pre-COVID beta. No, not 20, it's 10, and 10, roughly 10 to be though. Uh, and then 20 earnings. Mm, yeah, 20 earnings. So yeah, 20 earnings, okay, uh, I can live with that. Uh, it's 85, okay, <laughs> like normally it's 20 earnings. Uh, and then just last year, if you're gonna consider, people have just written it off entirely, right? Uh, they know things are gonna bounce back, so. Yeah, I don't know why this company was so badly hit by, yeah, it's probably like specialty chemicals, like all these industries would have, would have had lower demand. Fuel specialties, performance chemicals, oil field. I think oil field is gonna start booming now with the price of energy going up and that's just gonna really improve, uh, improve earnings, I think. So, something to look out for. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, that's really rich though. 
on an earnings basis. But on an EBITDA basis, 27, now also, also pretty high. Like I do 12. Yeah, I, I just don't get to 101. Uh, I just don't get there, you know. IOSP. I would want to see, it's too expensive for me. And I bet the PE is going to be high in the sky. The uh, PE, what am I talking about? RSI. Okay. Yeah, it's dropping. Like, eh, it's not that far away. Mm, 98. I don't know. I, w I would have preferred buying mm, below 95. Oh, that would have been, that would have been sick. Yeah, a month ago? Yeah, if I'd come across this a month ago, it would have been phenomenal. Oh, look, they announced earnings. 16.5 for a period. Yeah, I already have that data. We've already reviewed it. There's a surprise. Cool, that's awesome. And that bodes well for the rest of the year, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe a good place to park cash. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I would probably buy this. 90, 90, 95. I'd be really happy with 90. If I got 90, I'd be really happy. Huh. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait for 90. I mean, if this, if this trend sort of happens again. Let's call it 90. 95, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really good, really good company. I like this. Skip. Nice, nice, yeah, I like it. And again, like uh, you can actually compare it to FF. FF looks cheaper. It looks cheaper um, on a, not on a revenue basis, but price to book, price to tangible book, it's cheaper. Ibiza, even if you skip that last year, it's still cheaper. That's why, I like, yeah, I, I like FF more. Like, if I were to, if I were to compare, I'd say FF, FF definitely, I like more. Yeah, I like FF. Yeah. I, I haven't seen any company that I want to buy right now, like, right this second. Body blows across the business, bring in a spec. Is that what it's called? Inospec? <laughs> Review the company. I don't even know what their name is. Okay. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. What else we got? So where are the warning signs here? Gross margin decline, operating margin, revenue per share. Yeah, I know. Uh, over the past three years. Um, oh, no. Oh, per share. That's weird. First time looking at per share metrics for revenue. Yeah. All right. So that's IOSB. What else we got? It's a loop. I guess they progressively get more indebted. Uh, the lower we get in the list. Because again, like debt to equity here keeps going up, right? Debt to equity. But surprisingly, these are pretty low debt to equity. Did I filter my debt to equity? I did not, no. They just normally don't have a lot of debt. I like this. Nice. Nice. Uh, it's a nice industry, you know? Loop. Let's take a look at Loop. Oh man, I hate it when that happens. All right, let's see, Luke. Depolymerizing 
waste polyethylene terephthalate plastics and polyester fibers into base building blocks. Virgin quality pet plastic for use in food grade plastic packaging. Okay, water carbonated soft drinks. Okay, nice. It's based in Canada, Terrebonne, Canada. All right, okay, yeah. I can see, I can see why people would want to buy that. So, what's going on with their shares, man? They're just issuing shares like crazy. Low debt, financing debt with equity. Yeah, I don't like that, you know? What? Wait, what? Why is revenue zero? That must be. Did something break? What is this? Revenue is zero? Let me look it up on Yahoo Finance. Can't be real, right? It's up 8%. Why on earth is it up? CFO transition. There it is. Revenue is zero. How? How is revenue zero? They've never made any revenue? Wait, this is a first for me. They've never made any revenue. Wait, let me, let me make sure I got this right. They've made zero revenue, and yet somehow, so they have cash financed entirely through equity. Okay, forget the bankruptcy risk. No assets. <laughs> no dividends, naturally. None of these margins make sense when you have zero revenue. And so where is the price, ba what is the price based on? Oh dear Lord, wow. Zero account receivables, that was great. Accounts payable is going up though. What is this? Okay, I'm, I'm, forget the investment opportunity. I'm just curious how on earth. Okay, I just gotta see this. I gotta understand what's going on, I'm sorry. I mean, it's not like this is a new company. It's been around since 2016. It's been around for five years. Okay, this is obviously simply Wall Street. It's just some generated crap. In three years, just on three commissioned PAT facilities, the company can be generating 50 million in EBITDA. Insider buying? Okay, so they're moving from lab scale to pilot scale in preparation for commercial scale. Signed a license agreement. Too good to be true, okay. Okay. 
<sighs> oh, there's a tax burden. Okay. Okay, so this is this is kind of risky. You know, it's like investing in a startup. Uh, it's a completely different risk profile from investing in an established company where you have revenues and you can review everything and figure out, okay, what's the trend look like? You know, what's the efficiency? Here you have very little. Okay, all right, we have some insider buying. That's positive. This is positive, but this was, I mean, this was back in October. You know, what's the price look like now? I don't know, let's take a look. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice ticker though. What's the price like now? That was at seven, eight bucks, seven bucks. Yeah. What's the price? Eight bucks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hmm. All right, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, this would just be based entirely on insiders buying. That's it. Like, it's a bet. It's a bet on insider buying. Bloated short interest? Wow, really? Why would people short this? It's good for the environment, man. Why, why would they do that? Why would you short innovation? I'm just going entirely on my man Josh Berwick's work here. Like, I, I've, I've never heard of this. I don't know how far they are. 8% up. 8%? Uh, yeah, it must be this, huh? So is that 7, 60, now it's 8. CFO transition. Strong sell list. Hmm. A lawsuit. <sighs> nope. Sorry, man. I mean, I'll, I'll follow your story, but I, I just don't. I can't. I can't. 59 comments. What's going on? So oh, really? Wow. Your first comment too. Open diligence. I've never heard of this. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, I just don't see this working for me. Not happening. So, what else we got? That was an interesting, interesting story. So, a lot of five letter ones here, and then you have CN Energy Group. C-N-E-Y. Let's take a look. These plastic things are pretty interesting. Plus, they have no debt. Like, this is... I didn't even think this was a thing, man. No debt. CN Energy Group manufactures and supplies wood-based activated carbon in China. Wood-based activated carbon? Pharmaceutical industrial manufacturing water purification. I have no idea what that is. I 
I need photos or something. <laughs> I really have no clue. Oh, only two years of data, huh? In China, man, like they, they play around with their numbers, don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Like hear these stories and and that coffee. What was what was that coffee? Luckin, Luckin coffee. Just goes to show, man. You can't trust the numbers. Oh, the site's in Chinese, man. Sorry. Not happening. Not happening. I just don't see it. The operating margin, you have net income margin. All right, it's pretty good. But uh, negative operating cash flow, even though net income is positive? Must be because revenue is crap. How? How is operating cash flow negative if you have net income? See, this is what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know how it's possible. Operating cash flow is negative. Net income is positive. So that means the, so you add back the non-cash items. The non-cash items are actually negative. Non-cash items are negative. Okay. And if you need to hit the basics, I've got them here. So this is your cash flow from operating, operating cash flow, right? So you take your net income and then you add back all of these things. And typically, these things are costs, right? Depreciation, amortization, the cost, stock-based compensation, a cost, inventory write-downs, fixed asset, whatever, like changes in working capital, right? Uh, and then eventually you get cash from operating activities. Um, and this is typically more positive than net income. Not here though. Okay, whatever. So that's that. definitely not getting involved with that. What else we got? TG. Let's take a look. TG. I don't know why these short tickers, they just get me excited. It's kind of like a short domain name, right? The shorter the better, huh? Tredigar. Tredigar. Manufacturers and sells polyethylene, plastic films, polyester films, al aluminum extrusions. Okay, all right. Whatever makes you happy. Adult incontinence. Oh, adult diapers. Insurance off to comfort, feel extra flex. Bathroom tissue, industrial applications as well readers okay let's take a look whoa that is some dip a little COVID right okay so it was kind of dipping before as well yeah it dipped for a couple of years three years actually uh, and then came back up and resumed its positive trend until 2019 and then you know 2020 didn't fare so well either okay so, declining revenue, that's a concern. TG, declining revenue. I'd want to understand why, even before COVID. Okay. And then you have, so they've repaid debt, that's nice. Cash ratio is low, but cash over interest is 15. Uh, interest coverage, negative 16, so you have negative net income. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna ignore them. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're pretty good. They, they seem solid. Like cash over interest uh, is more than enough. Uh, assets per share, tangible book is 14. Okay, so not too much in intangibles. Book per share declined like crazy. Oh, they did pay a dividend though. Maybe that's why. Hmm. Cash per share is up. Liquidation to common, six. Okay. All right. Gross margin, what are we looking at? 18, so dipped in gross margin. COVID, huh? Yeah, typically around 20%, 22. I'd say average of 20, 20-ish 20 percent. Beta is minus, whoa, okay. Yeah, beta has gone negative. All right. But was typically around 8%. 
Um, then you have operating margin. Oh, okay, that was that's kind of scary though. What happened there? Operating margin so typically around five percent. Net income margin three to four percent. Three to four percent. Three to four percent. So earnings per share, about a dollar in earnings on average. If you had to average them out, about a dollar. So you're gonna do, I don't know. Mm, beta per share is two, so maybe 10 times, 10, 15 times beta? No, I don't see 15, probably 10, plus the dividend, 20, 24? Yeah. Oh, wait, let me see. So return on equity has been negative, but yeah, overall, it seems they're scraping by. Yeah, about 10%. Uh, yeah, probably average 10%. Return on invested capital is pretty crap. Yeah, it looks bad. Not great. Uh, maybe lower, like less than 10. Less than 10 times the beta. Uh, operating cash flow positive? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, probably a. Eight, seven, seven, seven times beta, seven fourteen, uh, and then plus four bucks from here, and that's eighteen. Okay, eighteen. Yeah, roughly seventeen point seven. Huh? Bam. I should hide this um, so that. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to avoid looking at that, but you know, maybe I'm looking at it uh, subconsciously. But uh, it would be better if I had like a button where I can reveal it. Uh, after I've given you my guess. Um, so that way it's more interesting. Instead of me pretending to not see it, maybe not seeing it, maybe seeing it, I don't know. All right, so yeah, roughly fair value. It looks like fair value to me. I mean, if you, if you ignore 2020 and you just assume that it's a fluke, uh, then yeah, maybe, maybe it's fair value. So roughly EV beta seven times, seven times beta. Right now it's negative 12, so, yeah. Yeah, that's only because beat the UV is 11 now? No, it's 17, 17.4. Huh, okay. 1.2 times tangible book. Yeah, I think it's fairly priced, you know? I think it's fairly priced. That's weird. Usually I don't feel like it's fairly priced. I feel like this is though. And it's been going up like crazy. Whoa, okay. That's pretty nuts. The RSI on this bad boy is nuts. I mean, I think it's fairly priced, but it's been going up like crazy. I'm not gonna buy at this price. Again, like that rule I have with with the RSI, remember, it's gotta be less than 50. I, I won't buy if RSI is this high. It's just too risky, you know? What's the upside? If it's fairly valued, what's the upside? I, I need upside in terms of a story, but if it's discounted, okay, then, you know, maybe there's something there. So I need, I need it to drop back to 15. Say 15.2. Yeah, that's what I need. All right. Be, that'd be good. That'd be good. And then I can buy it at, yeah, roughly the same as FF. I think that'd be decent. Forget EV revenue. Um, I'm talking mainly price to book. Uh, price to tangible book. Yeah. Price to tangible book. Uh, also EV beta. So roughly the same. Price to earnings. I don't know why FF has such a low price to earnings, uh, but probably because of the last year. Yeah. Yeah, I'd ignore that. Cool. So that's that. I think we've seen like the the bulk of these. So get rid of these. Yeah, I mean we we, we could go through the rest of these uh, if you like, but I'm kind of tired. We'll take a break and continue later.